Hi, I'm John Holler, President and CEO of the Computer History Museum, and welcome to our newest exhibition, Make Software, Change the World. Marshall McLuhan once said that we shape our tools, and then our tools shape us. But today, in the relationship between technology and humanity, much more than shaping is going on. That relationship is really transformational. And exploring that transformation is at the heart of the vision of the museum. We use history as a platform to explore that transformation. And our latest example of that is this exhibit, Make Software, Change the World. It describes stories of the way software unlocks the incredible potential of today's computers. But it's much more than that. It's about people, real people solving real life problems in ways that end up transforming all of us. A transformational story. It's modern, it's interactive, and it has people at the center of it. Our Vice President of Exhibitions, Kirsten Tashev, is here now, and she's going to take you through the exhibition. Our visitors are amazed by the history of computing. It's a lot older than they thought and a lot more interesting. But what they be want to better understand is how technology is changing their lives. And Make Software has just this in mind. It's organized into three main sections to really get at the impact of technology. Perception and reality, life and death, and knowledge and belonging. Let me take you on a tour. The first section is perception and reality, and the first story is Photoshop. There's no doubt that Photoshop has changed just about everything, from photography to marketing to filmmaking. But it's also changed how we see, see the world, especially in journalism and other places. Like that picture of your brother golfing with the president, it might not be real. In the Photoshop gallery, you'll have a chance to create a selfie with a famous person. Let's go to the next gallery, MP3, and learn about how software is changing digital music. Here's Mark Weber, the curator of this gallery. The explosion of the internet and MP3 and the iPod has made music something you can listen to absolutely anywhere, anytime. But there are trade-offs. Musicians have lost a lot of their income from recorded music and some people say that the MP3 format just doesn't sound very good. You can try for yourself with this interactive where you can listen to MP3 and compare it with vinyl and other formats. But still, I think it's, you know, no matter what, it's pretty cool to have millions of songs in your pocket or purse. Oh, thanks, Mark. All right, let's go to the next section of the exhibit, life and death. What could be more impactful than life and death? The next story, is MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging. A lot of people think it's about hardware, but it's a lot about software too. MRI saves lives, and it changes how doctors do their job. Now they can see inside of us non-invasively. Here is a touchscreen table where visitors can explore a healthy patient's MRI to an injured patient's MRI. Let's go to the next section in life and death. It's car crash simulation software, where you'll find a 2008 Ford Taurus crashed by Ford Motor Company at 35 miles per hour. Visitors can go inside the car and experience physical crash footage and compare it to simulated crash footage. Here's Dag Spicer, the curator of this gallery. Today's car designers use software that was originally designed to test atomic bombs. Using this code called LSDyna, car designers can create safer and cheaper cars all while sitting at their desk. Thanks, Dag. All right, let's go to the third section of the exhibit, Knowledge and Belonging, where we learn how software is changing how we consume information and how we interact with each other. The first story is Wikipedia, where we learn about the history of Wikipedia and the Wikipedians, the people who write and edit articles. Especially now, when traditional media sources are being challenged, Wikipedia, with its crowdsourced information, is really leveling the playing field. Let's go to the next gallery, Texting where we learn that this story is much bigger than you ever imagined and how texting is changing the developing world. Here is Mark Weber, Internet History Curator. So around here, texting is mostly a convenience. But for many in the developing world, it is life-changing. Uh, we went to Kenya and interviewed Maasai tribespeople who are now buying and selling cows with a payment system on their uh, mobile phones using SMS. And there are billions 
who never had internet connections or regular mail, who are now connected 24-7 through texting to the online world. So you think you're great at texting. Well, in the texting gallery, we challenge you to a friendly speed texting competition. Come and see if you'll be the next Computer History Museum texting champion. The third story in Knowledge and Belonging is World of Warcraft, where we learn about an amazing game and a very unique group of people. Here's Chris Garcia, the curator of World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game, but it's also a relationship engine that fosters interaction between people that leads to everything from 20,000 people conventions to romances and even marriages. At the heart of the exhibit is the Stata Family Software Lab. Here visitors learn about programming basics. They also explore a theater that features software makers and they learn that software is made not just by coders but a diverse group of people working together to change the world. And today we have some of those software makers with us. And John Haller will lead us in a conversation. 